What's up, champs? Welcome to another edition of Short Shifts, the uh, Keeping Carlson presented amuse-bouche between the mega shows every Sunday. I am Elon Dubrovsky, not usually here, but Jeremy and Lewis both had other engagements, but I do have one of the great Short Shifts hosts with me. Shams Benamore is back again. Shams, how's it going? Uh, it's going good. I'm dancing and being paranoid at the same time. I'm currently leading in my two semifinals that I'm in, so... I don't want to say anything until Saturday happens because you always have all those games, but uh, crossing the fingers. <laughs> okay, yeah, good luck. Uh, yeah, I'm actually in a matchup in our Keeper League against Jeremy, who beat you in the last matchup. Sorry to rub it in, uh, but we're in a really close one now. I'm up by like 17 now, but he's got like a lot of guys playing today. I just feel like his whole team is Matthew Kachuk. Like, I know he has other players, but I just feel like he's got to have at least like 25% of his points for Matthew Kachuk over these two weeks. Well, you don't forget Vince Dunn because I was the person that dropped him. So every time he gets a point, especially when he was against me, because it was like a three or four game period where he was doing nothing. And I thought, oh, it's just a defender that finished his hot streak. Time to try the next one. We were taught, you guys were talking about when to drop. I'm Team Churn. That's where it burnt me. (laughs) Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work out. But uh, one guy that I added that I thought was going to help me a lot in this matchup was Rasmus Sandin. And he has been pretty good up until today as I transition to our first topic for short shifts because uh, John Carlson is back for the Sharks after missing all that time after being hit in the head with the puck, that uh, very scary injury. But clearly the time off didn't change him. If anything, it just helped him uh, rejuvenate him and got him ready because he came in for this game today against the Chicago Black. Blackhawks, I should probably mention, we're recording this Thursday night around 10.40 p.m., so we've got a lot of the results ready for uh, you to share. And yeah, John Carlson got in on a couple of those goals. Uh, He scored one, and he had an assist both on the power play, the power play where Rasmus Sandin had been there and doing very well, but he was not there. And uh, Rasmus, for his part, uh, was on power play too, but got like a quarter of the PP time that Carlson did, and Sandin had no points, only one shot, like only one block, just so sad. I think, are, are we at a point, like, is it like, is one game sample versus Chicago enough to be like, all right, thanks for everything. Uh, see you, Rasmus. No point holding on to this guy. I, I'm on that mode. Like, the only reason I would keep him is if you have, like, limited moves at the end of the week and you're thinking about other things. But if you have a move free, you don't have time to wait and see. Like, we already know why you like Sandy. It was because of power play one. He lost it. So find someone else. Yeah, like it's not like he'll get no points moving forward. Like I don't want someone to see he gets an assist on Saturday and he's like, oh, you guys blew it. Like he'll probably do it like maybe like Orlov was doing on Washington. You know, like he'll get maybe like a 35 to 40 point pace potentially. So if that's worth it to you, then fine. But like, yeah, he's not going to be this like high end 60 point defenseman if he's not on the top power play. And Washington, as far as their schedule goes, they play Saturday against Pittsburgh on like a super crazy Saturday where like every team plays except for two of them. So you might not even be able to fit him in. And then next week he doesn't play all the way until wednesday so there's really not a point to hold him i don't think i think you let him go and uh if you have john carlson obviously you're very happy hopefully you got him in for today and uh, speaking of the capitals i wanted to quickly bring up one guy evgeny kuznetsov super cold over on washington and today they scored six goals you'd imagine it must have been a smorgasbord for kuznetsov but no only a, a single assist which is better than sandine but he also was on that second power play. So Kuznetsov like started the season a little bit disappointing, then was really heating up and it seemed like, okay, maybe he will be worthwhile after all. But now again on a cold, he was playing on a line today with Craig Smith and Anthony Mantha. So nowhere near Ovechkin is Dylan Strom, who you guys talked about on Tuesday. Like Strom was in the sweet spot and Kuznetsov one point now in his last four games. So this assist broke a pointless streak and he had a big long pointless streak before like a goal against Buffalo like two weeks ago. So are we in the same boat with Kuznetsov as we are? are within Sandine like you probably can't fit him in on Saturday no games until the following Wednesday why hold this guy oh yeah and uh, to add some context Mantha has been randomly healthy scratched to so just show how much they're thinking about him they're putting Knets off with him I'm with you like Sandine has more values than him at least because with defenders you can the value of a random points here and there but with Kusetsov just find the next guy <laughs> Yeah, 
So uh, it's, it's that time of season, right? You can't be holding on to someone who's slumping and not in a good spot. Uh, we got a bunch of goalie news next. Lots of uh, injuries and outcheries. As far as outcheries go, Elvis Merzlikens is back from Latvia. So Tarasov was sent down. Uh, Columbus plays tomorrow. I'd imagine Elvis will play. They also play Saturday. So maybe they get Hutchinson in or maybe Elvis has had enough of a break that he can just take both games of the back-to-back. I don't know. Well, hard to say what they'll do. Like none of these games matter anyways for Columbus. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Are you jumping on Elvis now that he's back or is he like either way he's still like a scary hold like Columbus uh lets in a lot of goals yeah it's one of those situations if you are just want to hold your nose and just go for straight volume because I have a feeling that Elvis at least has a better pedigree where versus uh Tarasov they won't be doing that random like two and one or one and one with Hutchinson that he should be in a position to probably obviously with the back to back it might be different but for going forward should be having the majority of the starts. And if that's a value, I'd go for that. But just understand that any night you could get destroyed. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a bit scary. It's too bad. I really thought going into the season that this could be a good year for Merzlikens, and it definitely has not been. Uh, over in Detroit, Ville Husso, we found out was injured. He's a lower body injury, uh, not available. Uh, for the game today. I'm seeing this tweet from Anzar Khan over on our game day tweet site. I just filtered on Huso. Super easy to get the latest news here. Uh, said also he's not available for Saturday. So either Helberg or Nedeljkovic will start on Saturday as well. So this is kind of like a Columbus situation where there are some goalies likely available to you. The question is, do you take a risk? Like today, uh, Detroit lost 4-3 to St. Louis. Helberg started the game, led in three goals on 13 shots, got pulled. Nijelkovic came in, uh, led in one goal on nine shots. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know who's going to get this. Probably Nijelkovic gets the start on Saturday, I'd imagine. But like again, like this, it seems like Detroit is not a team you want to be streaming goalies from unless you're really desperate. Yeah, and this is the worst situation yet because it would be a one-off because unless Ned gets in there for Saturday and then like goes off, I feel like this is just kind of like the Elvis situation, but you're not anywhere close to having a comfort of volume. So I would be hesitant, and especially on a Saturday, unless you're in the deepest of leagues, hopefully you have another streaming option. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe one option is over on Las Vegas. Uh, because they have Logan Thompson back, who was a great start. At one point, it looked like he could potentially even be a Calder candidate uh, with his start. Uh, then Aiden Hill started to eat into him, but then it all didn't matter because Thompson ended up getting hurt, and he missed a ton of time. Until today, we heard, we had news for a while that like both Thompson and Brossois were skating. You guys talked about it on Short Shifts before, but it, it officially happened. Uh, and yeah, so Thompson is in, and he's playing actually right now against the Calgary Flames. Uh, Vegas is winning 2-1 to one at the end of the second, and I'm seeing here Thompson has stopped 25 of 26. So yeah, no rust on him. Like, who knows if he'll like, completely fall apart in the third, but I have a feeling against Calgary, he'll be fine. Uh, so... That leaves him as, I'd imagine, the starter over Jonathan. Like, Jonathan Quick hasn't been that good. He had a couple good games. Uh, you know, I, I I feel like it seems like Thompson could come back to be the starter. And Vegas is a playoff team, so they need to figure out what they're going to do. Do you see this as like a 50-50 thing with Quick until Brossois comes back? Or do you think we've got uh, Thompson as the volume guy moving forward? I feel like this is one of those ones where you just wish you had a crystal ball. Because, like, you could make the argument of, like, he's been out for a while. It's been a long time. He wants to get some play to get back into it. Or you're like, hey, he just got hurt. We don't want to risk it. Quick, even though he wasn't perfect, played well and actually saved them in a few of those games. I've had him in the leagues, uh, a couple of leagues, and quickly dropped them once uh, Thompson came back. Because I feel like it's a Thompson or no one else kind of situation from a fantasy perspective. And then it was just more of a wait to see how much of a value Thompson will be from a volume perspective. Yeah, exactly. I think Quick for sure loses all value, and then Thompson you think should be good, but like no guarantee because he was a kind of splitting time. Uh, so that's it for our goalie talk. We still have a bunch of hot and cold streaks. Oh, no, we do have another goalie, actually. I'm seeing down here. Uh, one we almost missed. Tristan Jari is injured. Uh, so he's dealing with a lower body injury and didn't dress tonight for the Penguins. Uh, Casey DeSmith, who was like dealing with an illness, uh, was healthy enough to play today. And let's go and see here how the Pittsburgh Penguins fared. Uh, they're, oh, they're still playing also. They're playing as Dallas. They're finished the second period. And now oh, Casey DeSmith actually having a good game. 24 of 25. Sorry to sound so like surprised to uh, Casey DeSmith fans. Uh, but yeah, good for him, I guess. So 
I mean, this has happened before with Char- Jari injured and then DeSmith take over. And I remember like the last time this happened, a lot of people rushed to grab DeSmith and then he ended up being kind of a disappointment and maybe people regretted going for him. But if it turns out that Jari's going to be out long term, I don't know. Pittsburgh needs to win a lot of games. Like They're going to be trying hard, at least. This isn't like other years where they're just going to be resting, you know, Crosby and Malkin. They got to fight to make the playoffs. So maybe that's a good sign that DeSmith could be worth something if Jari's out. But again, we have to obviously follow the news to even see what's going to happen. So the interesting thing is, is that he wa- uh, the coach was asked about a timetable and his only response was not yet. So at the very least, we know that it's not like a Nick or a bruise, you know, a small thing that it has the potential of being something. We'll have to wait to see what it actually is, but not the greatest thing you want to hear from uh, a coach when you're asking about an injury. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that's, I think, all of the goalie news we had. So maybe that's a good time to take a quick break and then we'll get to a bunch of skaters who are both hot, cold, injured, outjured. We got a lot, so we'll see uh, how much we get to, like I said, but I'll be back soon. You're listening to Short Shifts. Welcome back to Short Shifts, Shams. We still have a lot to get to in terms of injuries and outjuries. Uh, here's a guy making his debut. He got traded at the trade deadline to the Vancouver Canucks, but Philly Heronic is finally healthy and playing today in the game against the San Jose Sharks. Uh, we're done one period. Man, I thought that recording this late. We'll have like all the games done for the most part, but all the players we're talking about are playing in these late games, unfortunately. Uh, but it's 3-1 for Vancouver, and Heronic so far, no points on any of those goals, uh, but he's had some secondary power play time. I'm looking at the time on ice. Third and no, fourth and time on ice among defensemen behind Hughes, Ethan Bear. I mean, you can't read it, so just one period, anyways. But Hughes, Ethan Bear, and uh, Tyler Myers have a little bit more. Well, Hughes has the most because he's also getting the power play time. Quinn Hughes, by the way, is having an incredible season. I feel like we don't talk about him em- enough, but uh, he's not available to anyone in, in any leagues. But Philly Heronic might be. I don't, oh, I'm seeing he's plus one. He was on the ice for a goal. Uh, so maybe he could have had something. Two hits. Anyways, I'm curious, like, people were really talking about how, like, I saw the trade and Vancouver gave up a lot to get him. And I was thinking, like, man, it seems like kind of an overpay for Philip Hironik. He's always just been kind of a mad guy in my mind. But then there was some, some advanced stats. I think, no, he's actually like a really good defenseman. Maybe this is, like, uh, anyway, is he good for fantasy? Like, is this someone that you're looking to add? Or is, like, you know, whatever, secondary defenseman on the Canucks? Like, at least on Detroit, he was getting top power play sometimes. Yeah, it's really the story is, is that... We're praising Quinn Hughes, and that's to the detriment of Heronic because there's zero chance that he's going to get to the top power play. So really what it's going to be is that one of the nice things he had been doing with Detroit was this, that he would have a lot of bagger stats and then have the chance for random points because he was on the power play or just because he was on the ice all the time. So even if his team wasn't scoring, if he's logging 20-plus minutes, maybe a random pass of his ends up becoming a goal. So I feel like that's kind of be kind of the situation. It might be seeing how he's deployed and whatnot to see if he's getting those banger stats. And then if you can live with that, with the potential of like tripping into points, that would be a kind of thing. But I feel like with Quinn Hughes, and if you're looking for offensive output, I would be looking elsewhere. Yeah, I think I'm with you there. Uh, in this game, by the way, 3-1, like I said, the Canucks over the Sharks. Uh, on the Sharks end, not a great start for James Reimer. Three goals against on eight shots. I wonder if he even comes back for the second. And I am seeing a new name here on the score sheet. Uh, Tomas Hurdle scored the lone goal for San Jose, assisted by Eric Carlson. That's a very common name to see on the score sheet. And Jacob Peterson, who I know kind of well, because I had him in my Dynasty League for a couple seasons as a guy on Dallas who would play every once in a while. And we once interviewed the Dallas beat writer, I think it was Saad Youssef, and he was saying how he thought Jacob Peterson looked really good in his rookie season with Dallas, uh, but I guess they didn't end up agreeing with him for the sophomore because he didn't make the team. He eventually got traded at the deadline, and now Jacob Peterson is getting in on a goal, uh, you know, uh, by hurdle, which must mean he's on a good line. So let me just bring up, uh, you know, frozen tools here. And no, actually, I'm seeing that generally in the game, it's been Jacob Peterson, Fabian Zetterlin, and Nico Sturm on a line. And Hurdle's been playing with LeBanc and Gregor. So I guess I don't really know what happened here. If, you know, I, I obviously we're not going to be interested in Jacob Peterson if he's not, like, at least on the top line. So he's probably a nobody, but an interesting thing that could have been noteworthy if he actually was playing with Hurdle, but I guess he's not. Yeah, one of those line changes or probably something like that where he did a play, a dump in, and then someone got it and. He walked out at the end. I'm not sure if it was a secondary assist, but either way, hey. Uh, Welcome to points are points. (laughs) Yeah. 
Welcome back to the league, Jacob Peterson. Okay, so uh, next up, let's do another injury here. Over in Montreal, Josh Anderson is hurt. You guys talked about Kirby Doc on the uh, last episode and how he just returned, which was like fun for Montreal, maybe getting some pieces back. Obviously, getting Cole Caulfield back would be the best, but he's not going to be back this season. Uh, but Kirby Doc has had a really nice return because you talked about him, his first game. Then today in the game versus... Uh, Boston, one goal and one assist. That's now two goals and an assist for Doc in his two games today. Yeah, so like I said, the the pair there plus uh, three shots, uh, three hits, like a very nice outing for anyone who's jumped on Kirby Doc since his return. Uh, Doc has been playing on a line with Druen and Gurianov today, so not even playing with Suzuki. Suzuki was playing with Hoffman and Raphael Harvey Pinard, and then unfortunately Josh Anderson got hurt in the last game. He took a a rough fall. And I, we haven't had really an update on when he'll be back. So I know you mentioned, I think, on the last show that Josh Anderson is someone that you've been holding. Uh, so uh, you, are you disappointed? I, and actually, we do have breaking news. Is about like oh. 30 minutes ago, out for the season with a high ankle ah. sprain. So those lines that you just said, I would guess stay. And then something to keep in mind as well is that while, while Doc was uh, demoted to the second wide, he's still on power play one with Suzuki. So... Even though I'm not sure how happy you are with a Montreal power play, but honestly, being around Suzuki, I'll take any minute I can get. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess Suzuki actually is on a hot streak now. Like, all I know is he didn't help me in my run for the cupful to try to like make the playoffs. He had a really long cold stretch, but yeah, I guess maybe it benefits him that Kirby doc is back because he's had now three multi-point games in a row. So uh, good for Nick Suzuki. Good for Kirby doc. And yeah, there's like Gurianov is having a bit of a resurgence here over on Montreal. So there are going to be some points. Yeah. Three points in the three games now for Gurianov currently. And uh, he also had a four game point streak. So yeah, he's actually got seven points in his last eight games, Gurianov. And so yeah, playing with doc obviously is going to be good. So yeah, it might be some fun offense coming for the rest of the season. So, Keep your eye on these Habs. Oh, yeah, because one thing, at least with Montreal, is what I'm noticing the last few games is they might not be winning, but it's not one of those situations where it's like eight to zero or something. They are getting hammered because, like, they can't stop anything, but they are still getting points. So in fantasy, hopefully you're not in a league with plus minus that Anderson was going off. You're just talking about these other guys going off. Hey, doesn't have to be a good team as long as they get random points that's all you care for so if everyone else is uh looking the other way you might have some gold that's hiding in here to be your streamers or your uh deep ads in your certain leagues where you don't have the uh, premium pickups yeah and if, you, if your league counts hits, doc, doc like we said had some hits today so yeah i think he's definitely the main guy like outside of suzuki that you'd want to jump on if he's out there um, so over in Nashville, I, I don't recall now, like Ro- Roman Yosi, I think was hurt on Tuesday. Did you guys end up covering him? I don't think you did. I guess he's just day to day. So we don't know, but he's been day to day now, like all week, which is kind of annoying because I have in my uh, finals matchup in my dynasty league. And it's like, he has a $9 million salary and which I don't mind. I'm happy to pay it to get Roman Yosi's production. But now that he's hurt, it's like, if he like if I add someone, I can't just drop it. It's a cap league, right? So, you know, so even someone on a one year contract, if I want to drop him, I'll have to take the, you know, the cap repayment penalty or whatever it is. And like I don't have that much space left. So like if Yosi I just want to basically I'm saying I want to know, is he gonna be back for my matchup or not? Uh but in the meantime, uh, Tyson Barry takes over on the top power play. And he hasn't really been doing too much. He did get an assist today, actually, even strength on a Kiefer Sherwood goal in this 2-1 shootout win over uh, Seattle. Uh, Barry is someone, yeah, someone was asking me about him on our Discord and being like, should I jump on Barry? He's been kind of cold. And I just figured like, hey, as long as Yosi's out and he's on the top power play, I guess I'm interested. He does have three points in his last four games, Barry. None, none on the power play, which maybe makes you think he could do well. Like, I don't know. Like, he's not so exciting, but... I feel like if he's out there in free agency, why not grab him if you have space while he's manning the top power play on Nashville? Though, to be fair, the people on this top power play with him are Duchesne, Cody Glass, Tommy Novak, and Luke Evangelista, so not like a star-studded group, though Tommy Novak is maybe a star that we just didn't realize. Yeah, it might not be the the biggest thing that I'm saying, but like, while I'm not the biggest fan of Barry, I would take him over, say, like a Sandine, because there's at least a road for him to get something. And especially right now is the dance is, is that um, he is day to day, according to the coach, but we all knew how close Forsberg was. And right now, just to kind of add, since we're talking about injuries, Forsberg went from basically imminent. I forget the exact wording they said to progress has stagnated in recovery from body injury, no firm return. So like 
I'm not, I don't want to scare people, but when they say day to day, we'll just have to wait until we actually see him on the ice. So maybe Barry might get some extra time here, but either way, you're saying that he was getting five V five points. So if you have these just random stragglers that he's sitting around and you have a pick or a ad to use, I'd be worth uh, picking him up. Like it's your third or fourth. Like don't be riding him as <laughs> your lead off, but could do worse. Yeah, and he's getting like pretty good minutes over on Nashville, like at even strength, which he didn't really get on Edmonton. So I think there's definitely value here. He was cold for a while, but yeah, I think he's a pretty nice choice for you while we wait for Yosi. Uh, but like, yeah, he might just actually be day to day. Like, it's not as if like every injury with Nashville has been sketchy, but yeah, this Forsberg one, you know, like I probably they did expect that he'll come back and like too bad for him. Like, he, I'd imagine he's out for the season at this point, but I guess we'll wait and see. Next injury I wanted to bring up is uh, over in Minnesota. John Klingberg is injured. We don't really have much of an update yet, uh, but the latest was just he has an upper body injury and will not play tonight for the Wild. That was tweeted from like the Minnesota Wild like official account. So in the meantime, uh, don't worry. We don't have to like talk about Kalen Addison again. Who like again like one day I'm sure he'll be like valuable in fantasy. Like I know uh, prospect people like him, but at least for today it was our good old friend Jared Spurgeon back manning the top power play. The guy who I thought going into the season would just do it like he always did, but I guess like quickly Addison took the job. Anyway, uh, Minnesota lost five to four to Philly, and actually no points for Spurgeon. Uh, so. You know, if he's out there in free agency, it's kind of like a Tyson Barry situation. Like, if, if he's in a good spot, you might as well grab him. We don't know yet how serious things are for Klingberg. I feel like the real story in Minnesota, so I could just get you to comment on two things, is the emergence of Matt Boldy has been insane. I guess we've covered that. Another two goals today. He's just on this, like, scorching run. We're definitely getting to a point where I think, like, you just want anyone playing with Boldy because of how well he's playing. And right now, that's Joel Eriksson Eck, who you probably can't get. But and Marcus Johansson, who's available in a lot of leagues. And another point today for Johansson. So he He's also on a run with Boldy being so hot. So I think we're getting to a point now where if you can fit him in, I'm pretty confident that Marcus Johansson is going to get you an assist pretty much any game that he's playing with Boldy. Yeah, the, honestly, like I am very surprised with how Boldy is playing because I thought it was going to be one of those situations when Kaprizov got hurt that it was just going to be everyone knows diving because he just depended on him so much. I'm surprised you're able to change your offense. And I guess Boldy is now that trigger man. So Obviously not to the extent of Kaprizov, but the same idea, the way that they're shaping their offense. You want the people with Kaprizov, you want, to a lesser extent, people with Boldy. So go ahead and honestly, I'll have to see if I'm in uh, still playing next week. I might have to keep an eye on Johansson. I'm not sure how their schedule is next week, but hey, points are points. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because before it was like you want the people with Kaprizov and those aren't the same people that are now with Boldy. So it's like Matt Zuccarello all of a sudden only one point in his last four games. Ryan Hartman was doing okay. But yeah, now it's like Erickson Eck and Johansson are the the two you want. Uh, and yeah, uh, Marcus Johansson, by the way, not on the top. Po- oh, wait. So it looks like in this game at some point, uh, Johansson ended up bumping Ryan Hartman for top power play. So just another reason to be into Marcus Johansson, depending on how things will go in the next game. Here, I'll give you the schedule. Next week, Minnesota plays Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. So only three games with two off days for you. So that's a good like start of the week ad. And then you could always drop him after the uh, Wednesday game. So yeah, I think that that is a good tip there to uh, go and get anyone playing with Matt Boldy, who is just on fire. You said not as good as Kaprizov, but honestly, like lately, it's like looking just as good. I don't know if he'd be able to maintain it as long as Kaprizov clearly can, but maybe, I don't know. Like Boldy's not a nobody, right? He's like a high pedigree prospect. Uh, any more injuries? Let's go next to Tyler Sagan and Outjury. So Sagan is back for Dallas. And uh, you wrote in the note here, do we care? <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe not. Like he's playing with Max Domi and Ty Delandria today. Um, this game against Pittsburgh, which is still going so far, no points for Sagan. He has a, you know three shots. I don't really care. Like he's not really that exciting this season. He's on around a 52 point pace. He'll probably continue around that. So like, what is that? A point? At, I don't know, like two points every four games, like maybe a little more three points every five games. Let's put it maybe for Tyler Sagan. So if that's worth something to you, then maybe, but yeah, he's definitely not the guy he used to be. I am in the same boat. So it's one of those situations. It's uh, something to keep an eye on. Maybe in your deeper, deeper leagues, take a look, but yeah, it's people were talking about Domi a few weeks ago when he was going off and they're together. So maybe a look, but I'm with you. It's probably better spots elsewhere. Okay, uh, so I brought up how 
Jacob Peterson got a point on San Jose, and I was curious to see his lines. The same thing happened because I saw that Tyler Bertuzzi is having a good game for Boston in this win over Montreal. Bertuzzi ended the game with a goal and an assist, and one of his points was an assist on a David Pasternak goal. So just like I just did it with Jacob Peterson, I went to go quickly look at the Boston lines. I'm like, wait a minute, is Bertuzzi playing with, with Pasternak? That's, that would be something. But I'm looking, and again, it was like Bertuzzi's been playing most of the game with Charlie Coyle and Trent Frederick and Pasternak was playing with Zaka and Krejci as he usually does. So I guess this was another throwaway thing. So probably don't get too, too excited over Tyler Bertuzzi, even though he did have a big game today. He's still like a third line PP2 guy. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's funny. Of just like we're talking about how Bertuzzi was a potential just because of uh, line one, power play one in Detroit, and now he's line three and maybe power play two just to show uh, how deep Boston is. Yeah. Um, over in St. Louis, I'll just bring up... Now I'm just going to do some quick hits here of just players that are interesting. Uh, so we talked about the Detroit side and how Helberg got pulled. On the other side, Joel Hofer got another game and another win. Not as great of a result, like stats-wise. Led in three goals on 28 shots. It was a sub-900 save percentage, but whatever. Pulled it off. It was actually two early goals in the game. Detroit scored like 38 seconds in Edvinson and then Wallman. So two defenseman goals and then Wallman's goal was like a minute and 28 seconds. So I guess Hofer just like maybe needed to be more focused after the national anthem. I don't know what it was, but after that, he said, settled in and looks like he had a really good game and um i'm pretty sure if i read it correctly when i looked at the tweet that biddington didn't even dress it was Grice as the backup so that might be another hint that potentially we're seeing our hofer going forward well yeah actually a uh, nice thing to consider which i should have done today actually i was considering it then i like like you know wimped out at the last one. i have one move left in my matchup against jeremy and i was thinking like maybe i should drop sandine to pick up hofer today because i'm thinking like st louis plays today and then they play saturday sunday and i have already my goalie spots filled on saturday but i had an open goalie spot today and then i'd imagine with the back-to-back finally hofer will probably rest on saturday i'd imagine and then maybe he goes back in on sunday so it could have been good to maybe get a thursday sunday and sandine is I just thought, like, maybe I'll hold on and give him one more game, even though Carlson's back. Like, clearly, I should have just made that swap. Uh, but, yeah, Hofer, we'll see. Like, I think he'll get one more game this week. And then if he does well, probably going into next week, if you're still alive in your league, it's looking like a potential, like, good goalie on a good team. Yeah, which St. Louis, like, was a seller. But they're still actually a pretty good team lately. Oh, yeah. It's especially with, like, uh, Verona coming in and, like, Vishnevich somehow becoming a good center now. Like, a lot of things are just kind of lined up and – your favorite player, Sammy Blay, doing things like... Ooh, another goal today. Yeah, just uh, needed people to give up on them for them to start doing things. I'm not sure where they stand for a playoff position, but, you know, hey, as long as they score goals and uh, don't let too many in for if you're a Hofer fan, then uh, good enough for me. Yeah, one person, though, who is not scoring goals lately and is starting to upset people is Kyle Connor over on Winnipeg. Not only is he not scoring goals... He's not getting assists. He's not doing anything. He's pointless now in seven. I guess Winnipeg is currently playing against Anaheim. We're two periods in. Uh, the goal for Winnipeg was Mason Appleton from Dylan DeMello and Adam Lowry. So a schmoll there while K- Kyle Connor continues to do nothing. How like are, are you at a point where you would even consider dropping Kyle Connor? Or is it just like, nah, he's too good. Like You just have to kind of hope that things will bounce back. Like, what's going on here? Well, one funny thing is, is if uh, you're a fan of Frozen Tools, and if you're not, you should be. I was just bringing up the team just to see the um, the points. And I think there's literally maybe one or two players that don't have the ice for the on a cold streak symbol on them. This whole team is just ultra cold. They went on a streak to make people think they were going to the playoffs, and now they're just kind of going into dumpster hell. They're tied with Anaheim of all teams right now that like basically giveaways points. So I'm not sure how I would feel like it's one of those things where I don't have them in any league. So my brain's like, Oh, I'll just churn. But like, you have to have some guts to see <laughs> hit that minus and actually drop. I feel like really what it would be for me is how the rest of your team is looking from a schedule perspective. Maybe you have a worse player, but you could fit them in for more games and then if you have somewhat of value that you could potentially pick up, say if there's like a, a hofer and you think he's going to take over the net, and you need a goalie, like it has to be a value pickup for me to cut bait. Yeah, it just seems like it's such a crazy thing to do. But hey, we're in the playoffs and like if he's cold and if the team is cold, then yeah, maybe at some point you have to give up. But you just know that if you drop Kyle Connor, then he's going to like score three goals in the next game. So buyer beware or a seller beware. Or like, I don't know, what would you call it? Not even a seller. 
trash giver away or beware. Um, another cold streak, which has been going on for a while now, but I'm just sort of starting to realize it is Nazem Kadri over on Calgary. Kadri is now pointless in six games, uh, currently playing this game against Vegas, which is still going. So we'll see if he can get something. Kadri's deployment has been like brutal. He's playing on the third line with Nick Ritchie and Dylan Dubé. He's also been bumped from the top power play. He is on a power play with Hubert Doe. But yeah, it's like the top power play right now in Calgary is Backlund to Foley, Lindholm, Manjapani, and Rasmus Anderson. Uh, and then I guess the secondary guys, the two guys they spent big money on this summer, Kadri and Huberto, don't even crack the top power play. So this has not gone well so far. And is Kadri someone that you consider dropping moving forward with how cold he's been? Or is it like Kyle Connor where you're just kind of nervous to actually pull the trigger? I'm in a different boat. I would be 100% fine dropping Kadri for me. The two players I love are, well, maybe strong for uh, Lindholm, but like I love Toffoli just because he shoots so much. So even if he doesn't score, it's going to get you something. And then you got those uh, other players of like um, Blackland and like Machapati that do a lot of other things. So if you have like maybe not in a points only league, but they do shots and whatnot as well. So, and then Coleman is there, but like those three would be on a different tier versus when home in Toffoli. All the rest depends on your league settings and whatnot. Toffoli, give me every second with him. Kadri, head out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shams gave the signal, by the way, for the people not watching live here, that uh, get out of here. All right. So uh, let's go to Philly now. I want to just talk about a couple hot streaks here. Uh, Philly's in one of those situations where they're giving some young players a shot. And one guy that's really stepped up since joining the team is Tyson Forrester, uh, 21 years old, was a 23rd overall pick in 2020, uh, getting his first run in the NHL. And, and now after today's game against Minnesota where he scored that brings him up to six points in his last four games so I guess a little bit of a you know light entrance first three games for Forrester didn't get any points but since then he's been doing great he's on the top power play on Philly he's been playing on a line with Morgan Frost and Brendan Lemieux which you may think isn't great but actually Lemieux and Frost have been doing pretty good also and like I said like you know with the power play also I think Tyson Forrester is gonna get a lot of run probably Tortorella likes him uh, so yeah, he's definitely a name I would take a look at if you're you know looking for some value guys in free agency that maybe a lot of people really have never heard of. Yeah, I'm with you. It's definitely it's points they're coming. Might as well ride it, but have an understanding that it may dry up the second you pick them up. But hey, people are enjoying the uh, streaks from uh, Chicago with your radishes and whatnot, and like before there. So like these don't have to be premium teams to get you the points and. You know, we have four games where he's showing off that he can do it. So there's a potential to keep on going. And, hey, that pickup could be what you need to make the leap from the into the finals or win it. So got to take some risks. And this shows enough sign that he could potentially hit. Yeah, I mean, this happens sometimes. Like a first-round pick that finally gets in like near the end of the season, like Boldy last year. I guess he had a lot more of a run. He didn't come in like in March. But uh, yeah, like maybe he's something and he's, you know, playing really hard because he's playing to like make the team next year basically already. So yeah, Forrester could be something. And I like that he's already getting top power play. Uh, so what, where else can we go here? I guess I'll do one more. Uh, Dawson Mercer has been on the top power play in New Jersey lately ahead of Jesper Bratt. I feel like I come on every once in a while with like a sky is falling about Jesper Bratt. Like, oh, he's not on the in the top six. Oh, he's not on the top power play. He always seems to be fine. But yeah, we saw some practice lines today. This hasn't even happened in the game yet, but some practice lines came out today with Mercer there on the top power play. I'd imagine we're not going to be nervous about Brat and like scare people, but at least makes Mercer interesting if he's available in free agency, which would be pretty crazy with the run he was on. I feel he's probably rostered also in a lot of leagues. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I looked at this as more as a uh, fan of Mercer because, and the interesting thing is, is that I'm not sure if a coach said this, but I saw this from multiple beat writers. It seems like it's a hand in nest thing where they want to have Mercer there because of how he uh, shoots. And it also, someone was mentioning is that they like to have since like Hughes carries the puck well and Brat does as well to kind of have those two skills spread out between the two. So this might be one of those, hey, he might be a better player than Brat or uh, Brat may be a better player than Mercer, but just because of just how the all the rest of the setups work on both power plays that he just 
unfortunately gets to the second one. But either, as we know, every time, as you're saying, we get scared, but he keeps on scoring points. But yeah, this is just one of those situations where you're talk- joking about Mercer. I have him in like a league. And for like the start of the week, I kid you not, I get that Yahoo notification for like two or three days straight. Pile of people dropping Mercer, pile of people dropping Mercer. And I'm like, I don't know why, but here's another side. If you're in one of those leagues that someone dropped them, scoop them up. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't hurt to have a guy on the top power play with Hughes, Mercer, like Heashier, Meyer, and Dougie Hamilton. That's a pretty good trio to play with. Yeah, I guess uh, it's pretty wild. Mercer was like scorching the hottest guy in the league. And now, yeah, only one point in his last six games. So this might just be also something that will, you know, help wake him up a little bit. So I'd be interested to give him a shot now, especially because he plays Friday, Saturday. So you can get two games. You're probably full on Saturday, but at least get that Friday game. And then you can reassess. All right, Shams, I guess we've done a long shift. Like I guess I always tend to do here, but it wasn't my fault. I feel like we we went pretty quick. We just had a lot to talk about, but this has been a blast. Thanks for uh, joining me. And thanks for all the great shows you've done. It's wild to think you just started doing this like what a month, two months ago. You're already a vet here on Short Shifts. Uh, So, yeah, great job. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Hope you've been enjoying the content this season. Of course, you got to be subscribed to Keeping Carlson because you're going to get more Short Shifts shows next week. But in the meantime, you'll get a Matchup Maximizer where I'll be talking about next week's schedule on Saturday night to release like early Sunday morning. And then, of course, Brian and I will have the mega show on Sunday. So subscribe to get all of that. Uh, But I guess let's cue this outro music. Shams, any final thoughts before I say the catchphrase and get us out of here? you're still in your playoffs best of luck to all of you yeah yeah exactly and if you're not just relax and and enjoy watching other people suffer and struggle maybe you could, if you're in a keeper league you have the opportunity to still pick up some good drop that someone needs to make because they're desperate maybe someone's gonna be who's someone like uh, kyle connor if someone drops kyle connor because they're nervous grab them for your uh, keeper league i don't know if that's gonna be an option to you uh but yeah thanks again and until next time make sure to play smart and keep those shifts short <laughs>